So you know what's really funny? When you go to make a video, and then you realize you weren't recording. I should know because I'm looking right at the phone, but it happens. Crazy times. Anyway, uh, the topic for this video at the moment is do you fight your lawn? Something I hear all the time. And my answer to you is quit fighting your lawn. And the common rebuttal is, well, AJ, I have to fight these weeds. And I'm like, do you have to? You wanna bet? I bet if you don't fight them, they ain't gonna turn off your lights. And so on and so forth, I could go on, okay? Uh, we often have various things in our lawns. Let me let me see if I can show you. I got I got these beautiful little purple flowers right now. Oh, oh let's see. Oh my God, look at those. Those are freaking beautiful. And this camera honestly is not doing justice for how beautiful they are. Okay. And then I got these little strawberry looking things in here too. Never hurt me. Swear. Don't taste very good, but they're edible. Anyway, so then I got some other stuff. Well, of course, I picked the one without a flower. Got these, there we go. Got these beautiful little yellow flowers. And, uh, yeah, you know, look at that bad boy right there. So beautiful. Again, camera's not doing much justice. They're even kind of waxy on the inside. I love them. They're all green, mostly, besides the flowering parts. Got some clover in here. Uh, really wish I knew what that purple stuff was. I think it's another clover, maybe. Um, but yeah, don't fight your lawn. It's simple. The whole kind of monocrop, monoculture idea of a turf is highly marketed stuff that we all believe, not all of us, but some of us believe is important. And what's really important? I think, you know, and again, uh, kicking, kicking the can over and over again here, but our health, our environment, our community health, our pets health, our children, our even our parents. <sighs> Whose parents doesn't use freaking some crap on their lawn? My dad's like the roundup king. You know, who do I just had to kill the weeds, man? He'll even hide that stuff from me. No joke. He will hide it uh, if he knows I'm coming over. But of course, just kind of like, you know, children playing with the markers. Uh, like it's like they put the marker away and like oh well, I don't know who did it I know well you know it all comes out in the wash right and then what I find is in the effort to fight the lawn uh, we make problems worse you know like who wants to put out a fire with gasoline you know, you may be, well, AJ, if everything burns off, then it can't burn. Not a good plan. Mm -mm. So, feed the soil first. Promote your lawn. No, for a fact, that nothing is the same during the change of the seasons. Yes, I'm in Texas. I'm in League City. It's like 80 degrees in December. Still not grass grown season. Okay? It's not. We're not in Florida. We don't get that luxury here. Because <laughs> uh, I, I was down in Florida a couple years ago, and gosh dang, was it beautiful. See my compost pile over there? It's freaking awesome. Uh-oh, got my little mix bucket. Even my little uh, chameleon sprayer over there. I've had that thing for way too long. I'm probably going to get a new one soon. <sighs> but why do we want to fight the lawn? Why do we want to put herbicides down? when herbicides are meant to kill plants and often you want to grow your lawn put those things together K 
Kill plants, grow lawn. Kill plants, grow lawn. Weed and feed. Not a not a healthy concept. Oh, it's so greasy today. It's so beautiful. I hope it's not messing up my sound too much. I'm trying to get over here. I got these salvia plants. Man, they're so freaking beautiful. Hold on one moment, please. So, I don't know if that made any difference. Uh, can't move. Yeah, there he is. Oh, oh, I don't know. Kind of don't want to move. I don't. I'm not really afraid of him. I mean, and you have something buzzing next to your face. <sighs> I love nature, but I don't want him right next to my face. But uh, I don't mind being close. I have this big old bee. Uh, and can I see him? I don't know. It's kind of hard for me to track the camera this way. But why are we doing this? Why are we putting herbicides down on the lawn where we want grass to grow? You want to kill the weeds, pull them bad boys. See that right there? I go get some grease too. Show you some elbow grease. Okay? It works. And the concept of a 100% weed free lawn is silly. Don't do it. I don't encourage it. What do I say? You know, support biodiversity, support bi soil biology. Why? We need diverse ecology and environment. It helps uh, reduce the risk of having pathogens destroy your lawn, i.e. brown patch, take-all patch, even pests. All right? You have a mixed-up lawn. Um, I hear this all the time. Why do I have this other grass in my St. Augustine? Most of the time it's like fescue or Bermuda. Guess what? Fescue and Bermuda don't get attacked by chinch bugs the way St. Augustine does. So if you bust up that monocrop, then you bust up your chances of having your lawn destroyed by chinch bugs. It's not cool. That is like my number one Achilles heel in lawn care on the natural side of it. But number two, maybe the other number one on the on the kind of human side of lawn care is mixture between chemicals and scalping uh, those are pretty even so you want to grow a healthy lawn then grow a healthy lawn okay don't try and kill off stuff and have high hopes that other stuff is going to live. Because a lot of times it don't work. If you've had success with it, hey man, I'm happy for you. That's cool. But I'm still going to discourage it because your health, my health, everyone's health, our environmental health should raise way above some plants that some people deemed shouldn't be in our lawns. You know what I'm saying? And think about who's selling this crap most of the time the same companies that sell you the herbicide sell you the insecticide and sell you the fungicide and you know other pet and the pesticide well each and one of those asides has an ability to have an impact on soil health which will adversely affect the health of your lawn. Now I say it this way and I apologize I know I may be coming off a little abrasive but something I see all the time even with people I've worked with in the past and who were like oh my god AJ this works so good I love it. A year later getting a call back man AJ can you fix my lawn? I'm like yeah what'd you do? Kinda like kid Trying to hide the marker. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Uh huh. You started following some citrus man. I got jokes. If y'all get that, cool. If y'all don't get that, I'm gonna leave that alone. Uh, but there's all these schedules out there. Use this crap at this time and this crap at that time. And basically, and worry about your fertilizer ratios. When you have three products in a bag that's supposed to feed something really well, ask yourself, do you live off of carbohydrates alone? Hopefully the answer is no. 
We need enzymes, minerals, all kinds of groovy stuff to, to make us work. Soil in the rhizosphere and around the plants work exactly the same way, okay? It mirrors each other, it's incredible. I know I'm going on a bit of a rant here and I'm sorry, but again, I hear this all the time. Quit fighting your lawn. Work with Mother Nature. Appreciate Mother Nature. Appreciate her biodiversity. You out there trying to commit horticultural uh, racism? Oh, I got a clover. I don't need no clover. Clover's legume, it fixes nitrogen in the soil. It's free fertilizer. Leave it alone. Dandelions is like free calcium. Mineralizing your soil. Leave it alone. And they're good for the bees. Come on, y'all. Ain't we trying to save the bees and the trees and everyone's all tripping about climate change and, you know, our impact on the environment? Quit jacking with the prick of weeds. Serious. <laughs> I also, check this out. Okay, fun fact. The healthier your soil is, uh, the healthier your biodiversity is, okay, the more you reduce pathogens in an area because you got good bacteria and fungi that are naturally working like your immune system to eat them up, okay? It's a fact. People in uh, low chemical, highly biodiverse areas uh, now, and I will say in the first world country, other areas where they don't have like good running water and ability to, you know, do normal cleaning things and refrigerate food. That's a whole nother topic, okay? But here in the U.S. and any other like first world country, the more biodiversity one is exposed to in a healthy manner with healthy plants and soils, uh, what we're exposed to pathogen-wise greatly reduced and when we are exposed to it because we're not on a toxic overload like we can be when we expose ourselves to all this junk our bodies can handle it way better isn't that good news who wants arthritis not me who wants some IBS not me and I say those things because those are things that can be attributed to from inflammation from things that affect our bodies like weed killers, herbicides, one of the most common freaking chemicals products out there put everywhere for this elusive perfect lawn because somebody marketed really well that we shouldn't have different plants stop with your horticultural racism i like clover i like dandelion i even like all these other plants i don't even know their names because their names are important to me what's important to me is can my lawn saturate a lot of water when it rains real heavy do i have to water it all the time do i have to mow it all the time uh can I walk around barefoot? Can I maybe eat a flower? I know not everyone's gonna eat flowers out of their lawn, but wouldn't it be cool like if you wanted to and you knew it was an edible plant to be able to without having to worry about, do I need to wash this off? Or, you know, is it gonna make me sick because it has something else on it? We don't need to worry about those things. We don't need to contribute to that. We can contribute to healthier lawns healthier soil, healthier people, healthier environment. It works together. I can't see my hands, like, it works together, people. You know, one world, one earth, one earth. Lots of different soil terrains, but mostly those microbes and how they function are very similar all over the place. And one little last tidbit before I go. I heard on another video that it is a bad idea to put down organic fertilizer in springtime. Well, I'm gonna bring this up again. But guess what? It's never a bad time to support soil biology, so that means it's a good time to put down organic fertilizer. Of course, it gets windier. God dang. 
So, I'm sorry if the wind is really impacting this video. But, down here in the south, you can use organic fertilizer all year round, pimping. Now, if you get snow and you get a real frost, it's just going to be a waste of money. Okay, but by the time you can start fertilizing your lawn, you can use organic fertilizer. That's a fact. Anyway, I hope this information is somewhat valuable. I hope you can appreciate the message. If you do, please like, please share, please subscribe. Uh, and if you want to know what to do on how to feed the soil and support soil biology, one of my favorite line of products is called MicroLife. Check them out. They even have stuff called Plant Soil Energy that is based off of our hippie juice. And they are loaded with more biological inoculants, meaning good bacteria and fungi, than any other freaking product on the market. Hands down, period. Nothing competes. That's a fact. Alright, I'm not a paid advertiser. I'm not some dude who's getting thousands of dollars on the radio to tell you some stuff is good. I'm the guy who uses this myself in my own business, at my own house. I've eaten this stuff. So yes, I'm serious about it. Okay? I'm not this schedule kind of person and treat this treat that treat this treat that it's not a treat this treat that kind of world it's really a feed this feed that support this support that kind of world and let's do that nobody knows grass like a hippie y'all have a groovy day peace